Welcome, Charlie. So nice to meet you again. I know we met years ago. You probably wouldn't remember me, but I remembered you and we did get connected. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me what led you to get involved in cryptocurrencies. I know you um, developed Litecoin and I um, wondered how that's going and where that's going and what you're doing now. Yeah, um, I guess I found out about cryptocurrency in 2011. Um, the main, I guess the main story back then was Silk Road, the dark night marketplace where you can buy drugs using Bitcoin and they only accepted Bitcoin. I found out um, basically how powerful the concept of cryptocurrency was. The fact that it's kind of um, freedom of money where you have money that can't be controlled by anyone else, like governments, and they can't inflate it, they can't stop you from paying anyone, which is something that I guess we've never had before. Like money has always been controlled by groups of people and yeah. Their own interests. Yeah. So <laughs> like even like I was playing poker online, um, and it's just poker, it's like a game of skill, but then the government decided online poker is illegal because I think the Las Vegas like gambling um uh, whatever society complain like, about it and oh then no. got got poker shut down oh no. so it's like but now you can play poker with Bitcoin if you want to right it's it's more about you can do what you want with it yeah. I mean obviously if you if you're doing something like really bad that's not good but there's other ways to it's not the money where you should control you should like kind of control it some other ways right so this is like I think Bitcoin um, kind of let the genie out of the bottle it's it's kind of you can't put it back in um, and it really captured me, and I guess I was, yeah. So tell me a little bit about Litecoin. Yeah, so I created Litecoin in October of 2011. It's about six years old now, a little bit over six years old. Um, I wanted to create something that complements Bitcoin, and I called it silver to Bitcoin's gold, because I saw Bitcoin as digital gold, and I wanted to create something that was um, kind of more... Uh, more useful, less fees, um, easier for, for smaller payments. Similar to how gold is heavy and you don't, um, you wouldn't use gold to buy like uh, meals, but you would use silver coins yeah. because they cost less. It do, it's not like perfect analogy, but we can see today that with Bitcoin, the fees are really high and Litecoin fees are still in the, in the cents or sub cents. So you can still use Litecoin to buy a meal, whereas if you use Bitcoin to buy a meal today, the fees would be like 10, 20% of your, of your meal, which, I mean, Bitcoin is good for, just like digital gold, it's good for um, large payments, it's censorship resistant, it's the most secure decentralized coin, and Litecoin is um, a complement where, where they can, you can use both of them like for different purposes. It's um, great to have a few types of cryptocurrencies um, and also just help spread the word, doesn't it, <laughs> for all the different uses that we've got. Um, tell me what your vision is of where you think things are going as regards cryptocurrencies. What's the future like? Uh, I think the future is where um, you would use cryptocurrency without even knowing it. Kind of like right now when you swipe a credit card, you don't know what happens in the back background, right? how many banks it calls and what happens, how, do, how things get rejected, how does your card get declined. And similarly in the future, um, you would use money and you wouldn't know whether it's using Bitcoin or Litecoin or some other currency. And like the complexity of Bitcoin will need to be kind of shielded, um, abstracted away from the average user. Like right now, today, if you're, if you're spending Bitcoin, you're, you're, you have to know like pretty much almost everything that's going on. If your, con if your transaction is stuck in the mempool, why is it not confirming? Did you not pay enough fees? All that needs to be um, made easy for users where, I mean, even like Lightning Network, like your payment could be going through Lightning Network, um, like swap with another coin, going through another coin's network and then coming back or whatever. And you don't care as long as the money gets to the recipient. And that's what I see the future of crypto. Fantastic. Well, I think it certainly gives us an option that wasn't there before 2008. So <laughs> I'm excited about it. And um, I was wondering if you have a, an interesting, funny, weird, whatever story about being involved with Bitcoin. Um, I guess one funny thing is that I like to tell people the, the reason why people are interested in talking to me um, is because they can't find Satoshi. 
<laughs> so they can only they can only find the light version of Satoshi. Okay, interesting. <laughs> and I know already some of the uh, panelists have been saying, "Oh, it's great that we finally get to meet Charlie." And I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> okay." So that's obviously a highlight tonight. Thank you so much, and it is de definitely a highlight for me to see you again. And um, really looking forward to this panel. I think I'm going to learn heaps. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. <laughs>